But either way, when we look at the diets and how they compare side by side, looking at apples to apples as much as we possibly can, even though they're not really apples to apples, we can start to understand that we have so much more at play than just thermodynamics. What is going on, I have Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today I'm gonna talk about this new video that Thomas Delar put out. Is 16.8 better than the OMAD protocol. Can you get more effective benefits from eating all of your meals within an eight hour window, which is a more extended period of time than a simply a very contrived one meal per day? I'm gonna go ahead and tackle that question in this video. Stay tuned. Okay, once again, I want to preface this video by saying that I respect everything Thomas DeLau says, and we're still in plans to do a collaboration, but as two people who love science and loves research, when it comes to these kind of subjects, especially things like intermittent fasting, being able to create rebuttals in a professional way where you respect the other party is very important in the greater scheme of studies and research as we bounce off of each other, pushing us forward and closer towards the truth. I'm going to tackle all the points and use only the studies that he used and break them down just a little bit deeper so that you can understand what's actually going on. Now let's go ahead and talk about the first study that he referenced. First thing that I want to do is I want to dive into this one study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Investigation. It was an eight-week study that took a look at two groups. Now in that study he referenced that there wasn't a significant difference in body weight composition or body fat mass. It was very slight. 4.6 pounds for the one meal a day group versus three pounds for the three meal a day group. That dissection of the study however is incorrect. Pulling up the study here, you could even see in the abstract that it states there was no significant changes in many of the biological aspects between both groups. However, there was a significant change in body composition within the OMAD group, the one meal a day group. And if you move all the way down to the subject where they break down this significant body composition change, that it is actually the one meal a day group that lost three pounds total with 4.6 pounds being body fat specifically. Yes, they lost more fat than they lost weight and this can happen as there's always fluctuation in glycogen as well as body mass, fat-free mass. And if you look right here in the study, it also shows that although the calorie intake was the same between both groups in which they individualized every single person and fed them to caloric maintenance so that none of them were to lose weight, the three meal a day group actually did not lose any weight as predicted. The only group that broke the prediction based off the thermodynamics was the one meal a day group, losing three pounds of weight and 4.6 pounds of of body fat, while the other group didn't lose any significant weight or any significant fat mass. So as he interpreted the study, he concluded that it wasn't enough for him to make a decision one way or the other, saying that OMAD is more powerful than just three meals a day. Based off that research, the study even in the abstract concluded that it was a significant body composition change between the OMAD group versus that three meal a day group. So if we went based off of this study alone that was conducted back in 2007, this study actually does show a significant advantage in doing one meal a day versus eating three meals. And both groups, remember, ate the same caloric intake to remain in maintenance. And just imagine doing one meal a day and being at a caloric deficit, how much more body fat you can tackle. But let's move on to the second study that he referenced. So let's take a look at another study that was published in the Journal of Translational Medicine. And this study took a look at more of a 16-8 fasting window versus typical breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now in this study, what Thomas is trying to point out is that this group versus the three meal a day group lost way more weight than the other group. However, the 16-8 group in this research actually only lost 4.4 pounds of fat mass after the time period was over. And keep in mind, they used around the same time period as the other study, while the three meal a day group lost 0.6 pounds of fat. Now you're probably wondering how come in this study, this 16-8 versus three meal a day study, both parts of Participants lost weight versus the other study where only the intermittent fasting group, the OMAD group, lost weight while the other group did it. Well, here's the part where Thomas is stating that it is as close as he can get it in terms of apples to apples because unfortunately to get it as close as possible to have the three meal a day versus that 16-8, he had to sacrifice one very important thing. And that very important thing is that in the OMAD study, they had overweight average people doing normal physical activity. In this one, they had high intensity athletes doing strength and resistance training every single week. It isn't the same group. So regardless if you're eating at a caloric maintenance, if you're exerting a lot of energy, if you're building strength in your arms, legs, 
doing a lot of cardio, doing a lot of resistance training, you're going to lose weight regardless if you do three meals a day or if you do 16-8. But the really good and really shining light thing here is that the 16-8 diet group, even though they were eating at a caloric maintenance, still lost 4.4 pounds. But the thing that sticks out more to me about that study is in its correlation to the other study. Because the other study, they didn't do any resistance training. They were not athletes. They were just normal men and women that were overweight. They still lost more fat mass than the athletic trained men and women that were doing the 16-8 diet. So once you look deeper into that study and you look at that specific difference, it completely flips the conclusion that Thomas DeLore was placing on his video. If we were to base everything on just those two studies, it would be much better to utilize the OMAD style as opposed to the 16-8 style. But just for the sake of argument, let's move into his tiebreaker research study. But to really give ourselves a tiebreaker, we have to look at another study. This study was published in the journal Metabolism, and it was also an eight-week study with the same structure as the study that I referenced that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Investigation. Now, in this study, he touches on the fact that the OMAD diet had an increase in blood glucose versus the three-meal-a-day diet. Now, that is true. The OMAD diet did have an increase in blood glucose versus the three-meal-a-day diet group, but you have to look deeper into the research to see that the methodology failed and giving you a more accurate comparison of OMAD versus three meals a day. How did they fail, you ask? In the way that they prepared and tested the subjects for the blood glucose. Both groups, no matter if you were doing the OMAD or the three meals a day, had to stop eating by 8 p.m. and do an overnight fast. They had to be completely fasted before their blood glucose levels were tested. Now, if you understand the concept of fasting and how it works, the moment that you eat, you break your fast. So if the OMAD group is breaking their fast later and the three meals a day is spreading their meals out and having their their last meal virtually at the same time that the OMAD group is having their large meal and then both of them go into the same fasting hours until they test their blood glucose, of course the three meal a day group is going to have an advantage in blood glucose because the OMAD group is eating a big meal on the final hour while the three meal a day group is eating a small meal on the final hour. But here's another kicker. If you look at the chart, you'll notice that they were very, very close in blood glucose, but then this is how they actually tested blood glucose they gave them 75 grams of glucose to drink they then tested their glucose in a span of two hours checking their blood glucose at seven different intervals but if you notice it spikes really high for the group that's doing the OMAD diet because obviously they had a big meal they're already at a higher level plus because they're fasting for longer periods of time versus the three meal a day group their insulin is going to spike up if you're just giving them 75 grams of glucose to drink but because they are more insulin sensitive than the other group as they're building a fat adaptation you can see that although it shoots up on the second hour they've caught up if you were to continue to look at this chart based on the trend alone and using a regression formula you would know that they will be much lower in blood glucose by the end of the day even if both groups were to continue to fast and not eat for the rest of that day the OMAD group will eventually have a lower blood glucose level total day even looking at the insulin level there was a a delay in their insulin moving up because they were more insulin sensitive than the three meal a day group and if you notice they were only above the three meal a day group for two separate intervals after those two intervals they were back below the three meal a day group and remember the caloric intake was all the same they were all eating at a caloric maintenance level however they were more insulin sensitive and their blood glucose moved much faster to drop to baseline level if you only took a snapshot of those 120 minutes then obviously yes the OMAD group had a higher blood glucose level if they had to drink 75 grams of glucose during their fast which is essentially breaking a fast and also ending their fast at the exact same time that the other group was ending their fast going into a fastest session before testing their blood glucose that is definitely going to skew the numbers and it's not going to give us an accurate depiction of what OMAD can do in terms of blood glucose versus three meal a day if you account for all those wacky variables that they put in and kind of ruin the methodology to figure out what the exact numbers would be. Even the tiebreaker that looks at the blood glucose is by no means the smoking gun. If anything, looking at that chart can show you that the OMAD group would eventually not only catch up, but also pass them because of the speed in which they were dropping their blood glucose. And not to mention the first research that he touched on showed body fat and weight loss in the OMAD group with no weight or body fat loss in the three meal a day group. Just want to make a friendly response to that video. I 
I will have Thomas's channel linked down below if you want to go and check him out. He's really, really smart, has a lot of good information on the keto diet and a lot of good information on intermittent fasting. So you can go ahead and check him out below. And I hope this video was very informative for you. And I want to thank my patrons from my Patreon. And I'm going to put their names right up here. And of course, as always, guys, I'll see you on Wednesday for another FAQ. Peace!